Um, so I do now want to um, shift gears again. We're very pleased to be joined um, by uh, John Rigard, and hopefully I pronounced your last name correctly. And if, if not, my apologies. Um, he's the regional director for DCAP claims. And for those that aren't familiar, and John will be going in more detail um, into, into this, but this um, next discussion is going to be primarily for uh, community pharmacies um, owners and those who are working in community pharmacies um, that take it take credit card transactions because there's been a national uh, settlement and John's going to go in and Megan and is, who's also here is going to go into the details more and um, they've been helping uh, state pharmacy associations um, they've been working with uh, particularly we got connected to our counterpart in Washington State and yes. they've also been working with the Illinois Retail Merchants Association as well, if I'm not mistaken. So um, some of you, some of this information may be, um, you may be hearing it again for some of you who are also um, members of IRMA. Um, but we'll also be sharing this out. This is being recorded, so we'll be sharing this out to the independent owners um, group email as soon as I get the video edited. Um, because this is a huge opportunity and we don't want you to leave money that's actually yours coming back to you on the table. So I'll turn it now over to John and Megan. Oh, thank you very much. I am so inspired by what you all talked about um, and health. You know, of course, we don't have our health. We don't have anything. And I think people always are seeking money. But bottom line is we got to have our health. Uh, so thank you. It was a lot of good reminders in there. Thank you very much. And it's good to see all the people in the heartland there. I grew up in Madison, Wisconsin. So shout out to all of you. Uh, I'm now in California. Miss, miss the heartland a lot. Um, Megan and I uh, cover different parts of the nation and we're helping as many businesses as we can. Lots of pharmacies. Uh, even if you're not the owner of an independent pharmacy on this call, maybe you'll know people that are. Uh, we're going to be short. It's only about 10 minutes of a presentation on some Q&A. Uh, and our, our focus is to help everybody get the, the most refund they can. Uh, and we are great at it. We're, we're experts um, in that um, both Megan and I know how to make sure you get the right claim in place. Uh, and beyond that, our team behind us does the job with the administrator who is you know, the governing group of the whole nation for this. So we are experts, just like a CPA is an expert. Uh, for their, you know, their work. We are doing the same sort of expertise in our work. Uh, Megan is going to present the details, uh, um, and then we'll have a Q&A afterwards. I promise I won't go past maybe 15, 20 minutes, uh, but thanks for listening. All right, guys. Hi, I'm Megan Kuzma. I am another regional director over at DCAP Claims. Uh, Lauren, I want to thank you for that presentation and for the good work you're doing over in Illinois. Um, the Lifestyle Coach Program sounds wonderful. And it sounds like you're going to make a big difference in a lot of people's lives. So very interesting to be a part of. And, and thank you for that. And I just want to thank all of our participants here. Uh, I appreciate you guys staying on for this last segment. I'm going to keep it as short and sweet as possible. Antitrust law tends to be a pretty dry topic, so I won't bore you to death. However, I think the most important thing to emphasize is that there are real funds in the thousands of dollars available to pharmacies operating in Illinois. Um, without making a claim for these funds, you'll be missing out on the opportunity. So DCAP Claims has partnered with the IPHA to work with their members to help them recover these funds. Um, and we're excited to share with you as quickly, without boring you too much, a little bit of details about the Visa MasterCard settlement. So we have partnered with IPHA, we are DCAP Claims, we have been working on antitrust and class action law settlements for over a decade now, we like to consider ourselves experts in settlement and recovery. So in our conversations with Garth and Susan at IPHA, we have uh, come with a special rate for their members. So typically we find that antitrust law settlements, third party filers who are going to do this on your behalf, they typically charge between, this slide says 30 to 33%, but I typically find most of them right around that 35% figure. Um, so we've gone ahead and negotiated with IPHA to offer their members a discounted rate of 25%, keeping more of these settlement funds in your pocket. Um, some very juicy and exciting details about class action and antitrust settlements. Uh, most importantly, these laws have been in place since 1890. Um, they prevent, uh, they govern federal law to prevent monopolizing of different industries. 
So when it comes to the Visa MasterCard settlement, it is alleged that Visa and MasterCard overcharged anybody processing their cards between the years of 2004 and 2019. Now, they haven't admitted any guilt in this. Uh, what they've done instead is set aside $5.5 billion to be redistributed to just about any business that processed Visa and MasterCard between 2004 and 2019. So a little bit about our company, Decap Claims. As I've already mentioned, we have been in business for over a decade now. We've worked on countless antitrust and class action settlements related specifically to businesses, so business-to-business -business settlement claims. It's important to note that we are not a legal firm. However, we work very closely with lawyers who support us in defending these large cases. And we kind of hold our value in handling the entire complicated claim process on your behalf. So eliminating as much time and resources as possible from your busy pharmacy while still successfully pursuing the funds that are owed to you. Uh, another highlight on this reel is we've recovered over 200 million. I actually think that might be a little bit of a conservative figure uh, for our clients um, in this settlement and in many others. Specific to this Visa MasterCard settlement. Um, so this settlement is applicable to almost any business that processed Visa and MasterCard between January 1st, 2004 and January 5th, 2019. There are very few exceptions to that rule. If you accepted Visa and or MasterCard as a form of payment, it is very likely that a portion of this five and a half billion dollars is going to be available to your business. Also worth noting, uh, as a lot of independent pharmacies, you do not want to compromise your relationship with Visa and MasterCard. They are a separate entity in this process. They're not even going to be aware that you've pursued these funds. So there is no risk to your relationship with Visa and MasterCard as a processor. Um, also worth noting on this slide, we've been in recent communication with IPHA and really hopeful to get as many of their members signed up. Up until last week, our filing deadline was August 30th. It's recently been extended to February 4th, which allows John and I to take a bit of a breath and get to each of your members to make sure that they do get these funds that are owed to them. Um, some examples of our clients that we serve multiple associations in various different states. Um, because my in-laws live in Illinois, Illinois tends to be a state that I typically manage. I visit it quarterly. I was in Springfield in May. I am familiar with Gurney that I believe uh, Lauren mentioned. Uh, my husband grew up in Buffalo Grove. My in-laws are in Arlington Heights. Uh, I'm very familiar with, with Illinois, and I'm thrilled that I've been able to recover so many, so many funds for Illinois residents. A highlight of that certainly for me is the Illinois Retail Merchant Association. I believe at last check, I have recovered over $2 million for IRMA members, and I'm really hopeful that we get the same type of results with the Illinois Pharmacist Association as well. This next slide here is what we call a case study of an existing pharmacy client that we have signed up for the Visa MasterCard settlement, which also includes an estimate of what we expect their recovery amount to be. So looking at this example here, I will tell everybody on this call that this is actually a pharmacy in Illinois that I signed up through IRMA. Um, they did an annual processing volume of $3 million per year, and they were open from 2004 through to 2019, so for the entire 15 years of this settlement period. And our estimate for their recovery amount is $19,000. So I hope that figure gets every independent pharmacy that happens to be on this call a little bit excited that this isn't going to be something where you get a check for $20 or $30. We're talking about significant amounts of funds that are available and hopefully that will make a change to your pharmacy and your business at the end of the day. Um, our job at DCAP Claims is to simplify the claims process as much as possible on your behalf. So with this recent deadline extension that I've shared with you guys on this call, we are under the impression that it's likely been extended due to the lack of participation, meaning that so many eligible businesses who process Visa and MasterCard in the years that I've mentioned have not submitted their claim. And we were so close to that deadline with just you know a week or two left that the, the claims administrator has decided to extend it. Um, so if you have not accessed this claim yet, it has been open for registration since 2019. We're here to take all of the headache, all of the pain, all of the time and resources of your business while still successfully pursuing this claim for you. 
So our process to get you started, very simple. We've actually been through it with Illinois Pharmacists Association themselves for the processing that they did on their Visa and MasterCard. And I hope that Susan and Garth found the process to be as straightforward as possible. We send you an intake form that, that has about 14 questions on it. After that, we send you a very simple service agreement, two pages, nothing complicated. After that, we do the hind end work of making sure that we defend your claim and get you the maximum value that your business is owed. Uh, speaking to that intake form, I'm going to pop an example up on the screen here. You're going to see that the details we're looking for are mostly very basic company information, your mailing address, legal name, your signer information. You'll also see that we're requesting some estimates on your volumes. I always like to emphasize that these are intended to be estimates, not exact figures. You can base your estimates off of any year between 2004 to 2018, but we don't expect you to get an exact dollar amount dating back to 2004. So hopefully this is, gives you a good example of the limited amount of work that we will need to pursue this claim for you. That's it for me. I try to keep it as quick as possible. I know it's getting quite late for you guys over there and you've probably been running your pharmacy all day. Um, both John and I are gonna be handling the IPHA account. You can reach out to either of us. Uh, we work very closely together and our biggest goal is to just make sure that you get these funds that are owed to you. So feel free to reach out to either of us to get in touch uh, and we'll make sure that we get you signed up to claim these significant funds available to your business. So I have a question. Do you have to, do you have to, if you have partial of those years, so any within that range? Great question, Starlin. Um, even if your business has subsequently closed or was only open for one year of the settlement period, you are still el eligible to participate. Um, this question has come up a number of times with businesses who maybe sold their business in that period. They are still eligible to participate. Um, so if you were only open for two years of the 15 years, we might expect a, a smaller return based on your processing volume. However, it would still be a return available to you. Excellent. So awesome. This is... <laughs> A lot, very quiet. I hope that means I was really thorough and I went over any questions that may come up. Um, I think it's just important to emphasize, you know, these are very real dollars available to you. Um, we're here to make it as easy as possible for you to get these funds. And yeah, we're just looking forward to meeting your members, seeing this presentation. Uh, you guys are doing some great things in Illinois. We'd love to put some some money back into your business's pockets. You should come in September. You know, I, mean I down the dates because I'm actually going to be in an Irma event uh, immediately after that. So I, I hopefully I'm able to stop by and, and say hello to your members. Yep, we'll we'll talk more about that. Um, so um, any questions for John or Megan? I think it's important for those that may have moved on from their previous store to know about this. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's a very good question. I've had come up in Nebraska and also Washington State. People said they they, they heard about. It. They're still on the mailing list uh, for whatever association. Like, can we claim it? I said, Yeah, you can. Yeah, and, and so it's they, something. It's something I've worked on with a number of uh, Irma Illinois Retail Merchant Association members too. Uh, specifically, there was one uh, employee at Irma that, that worked there 10 years ago that knew a bunch of businesses that had closed, put me in touch with them and we were able to recover those retired business owners a pretty significant amount of funds as well. That's that's awesome, thank you. I, my son has a business and so I was thinking he did everything. Well, Starlin, you've taken the words out of my mouth. So this doesn't <laughs> just relate to pharmacist associations. So if you have a neighbor, a brother, a cousin uh, and they <laughs> own a uh, please feel free to send them to either John or I. We'd be happy to help them out with this. The reason why we got involved with Illinois Pharmacists Association, a little bit to do with Washington, which is John's account, a little bit to do with Irma, which is my account. And I, I signed, you know, the example that we used in that case study is an existing pharmacy in Illinois. Um, so it just seems, you know, match made in heaven. We're perfect for each other. Let's recover all of the pharmacists in Illinois, the funds that they deserve. Yeah, especially the independent the independent uh, pharmacists are perfect uh, for this. I mean, the bigger ones can't claim. They're, either, they're maybe on the opt-out list. You want to say anything about the opt-out list, Megan? 
Eligibility is quite broad with this settlement. Um, I like to say anybody who processed Visa and MasterCard is eligible. There are very few exceptions to that rule. Um, one of one exception that John is mentioning is our is our massive opt out list. They tend to represent the biggest players in the game. We're talking Amazon, Walmart, Target. Um, the good news R of the, Rite Aid and Walgreens probably right. I Wal Walgreens is included on that list as well. So we're definitely more targeting your independent pharmacies. However, if there is a bigger pharmacy chain, let's double check and make sure that they aren't included on that opt out list. And if they're subject to a franchise, sometimes they're still able to pursue the funds. So I think we should still have a conversation with anybody who thinks they may be eligible. Um, yeah. Yep. In that same breath with the opt-out list, anybody who uses a third-party processor, PayPal, Stripe, those types of things, they aren't eligible, but I don't expect that to be something that comes up often with the pharmacist associations or with the pharmacist operating in, in Illinois. So anybody who has accepted Visa and MasterCard should reach out and we can confirm based on that opt-out list uh, or their franchise situation about their eligibility. Definitely.